Wonderful. So next up, we have the University of Florida Gainesville Alligator newspaper. And they'll be talking about how they handled Richard Spencer at Comrade Campus and how the governor of Florida sent out state troopers in response. So that's a lot for a student paper to take on. But let's hear about it. Um, I'm actually not talking about that at all. <laughs> um, yeah, I did. Um, it, it was my mistake. I wrote a description um, about this um, talk, and I, at the time, wanted to talk about Richard Spencer. But looking back on it, um, after March for Our Lives, I realized that our reporters were really um, like molded by their coverage of Richard Spencer. It was, for most of them, their first time in a crowd. So getting to see that and learning how to approach that um, made our March for Our Lives content that much stronger. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, how we did this. It was really more of a multimedia approach and um, why we did it in the first place. Um, we created a full um, website, basically, um, with our March for Our Lives coverage. Um, we had you know, this many reporters and editors working on it. That doesn't even count um, photographers, copy editors, that sort of thing. And um, we put in um, an incredible number of hours. Just that map there of the over 700 uh, marches around the United States was created by our digital editor. And can you imagine the amount of effort it takes to go through a list of 700 marches, identify the location, and put it on a map? Because <laughs> she's a data journalist, but that's just incredible. Um, how much data was gathered from this. Um, and the reason why we did it was because it was incredibly important for our UF community. We have 50,000 students, and that makes it a challenge sometimes because um, our publication has to address all the issues that 50,000 students are thinking about. Um, but about 300 of those students came from this high school. Um, and um, I can't even guess how many people come from um, South Florida high schools overall, but I know my high school is very similar to what Stoneman Douglas looks like, um, and that plays a role in how the community reacted to this. Um, right after the shooting, there was about um, five or six vigils held on campus in the preceding two weeks, um, and there was also a group of 112 um, students from UF, mostly from Marjory Stoneman Douglas and neighboring high schools, who decided to go up to Washington to protest for March for Our Lives as well. Um, the how of how we did this is incredibly important. We took what we learned from Richard Spencer. Um, we had been out there in the protests. We had seen them shouting, um, pushing. Uh, and we knew that we wanted to show our readers what we were seeing. Um, a lot of people didn't go out to that protest because they were emailed by um, the, the pres UF president not to attend the Richard Spencer event. So um, they were kind of clueless about what was going on on that side of campus. Um, and the same thing goes for March for Our Lives. Um, we wanted to bring in um, audio, visuals. Um, we did that through a few different ways, um, that especially that I highlighted on this slide. Um, our live blog was incredibly important. Um, I know a lot of uh, media uses this as a way of curating the content that each writer is working on on their social media as they're at an event. Um, the live blog consisted of coverage that we had in a few different areas that I'll get to. Uh, we also had videos from our video intern um, of the march, and uh, we released a video before the march of what area high school students thought um, or, or were feeling after the Parkland shooting. And after all of this ended, at the end of um, March for Our Lives, we went back and our editor-in-chief gather, gathered all the audio content that each reporter had collected and made a podcast of voices from the march talking about why they were out there doing this. Um, the, as I said, the where is important. Um, our main editors, this is all their idea, um, decided that in order to tell this story, there was no better way to tell it than to um, go into Parkland, Gainesville, and Washington, D.C. Gainesville, of course, is important because um, it's where we are and our readership needs to know what's going on in their own community. But Parkland was important because the shooting occurred there. And Washington was important because, as I mentioned, 112 UF students bust there. Um, and those were just the students that participated in that program. I know that there were other students that um, drove cars, that sort of thing, to get to Washington. Um, our Parkland coverage was our first 
um, coverage right before March for Our Lives. Um, one of our editors um, wrote a feature through the lens of this girl right here. Um, she was a alumni student of the high school and um, was a current UF student. Her brother was in the high school at the time of the shooting and she lost her, her, a friend of hers at the Las Vegas shooting. Um, you know, she had been affected by gun violence. She knew what that loss felt like and um, she spoke about that. What we really wanted to highlight though was the change in the Parkland community, uh, which I thought was captured beautifully by this story. Um, it, it really um, was telling about how many students immediately after the shooting went back to their home um, to be with their family. I think that is, is really what Parkland um, was all about. Um, they, they were you know, all, all gathered there um, after the shooting and then also during spring break when students again returned. Um, I'm also going to talk to you about the DC um, coverage of it. We, I, I, I covered DC and my approach um, to it was um, the bus ride because I felt like these students were driving or, or riding um, 12 plus hours to get to DC and back. Um, well, 12 hours there, 12 hours back. That's a long time. Um, and there, there was also our largest event on campus that we do every year is a charitable event. Um, it's like 26 hours um, of dancing. And um, it raises like $3 million for um, sick children at our local hospital. Um, so these students that would normally be attending that event were giving that up, um, getting on buses, going to the march, standing in DC for four plus hours, um, listening to speakers, holding up signs, um, and why they did that was important. Um, I talked to a few of them before they got on the bus, took pictures with them and their signs, and wrote a series of vignettes about each one, um, why they were dedicated to this. Um, you know, this one that I um, have up here was what he first, when he first heard about Parkland, Parkland shooting, he was in class, he looked down and he was getting text messages. Um, he was an alumni from the high school. Um, and then I did wrote a second story after the march um, about um, their, you know, the whole going there process, what that was like, how they felt. I wrote four pages um, on just the march that I never even published because as important as that coverage was, I feel like we all know as college newspapers, there are already national newspapers that are covering you know, March for Our Lives and other stories. That, um, so it's really our job to switch up the approach and make it about the students and make it about um, what matters to our readership. Um, speaking of that, the Gainesville March um, was attended by a th about 1,000 people. Um, and we had three reporters there, two just writing the story, one for social media. And that was important because um, our social media reporter focused on video and audio, um, highlighting who was speaking there, um, trying to get a, as close to the stage as possible to get more information about that. And they wrote a story in addition. Um, all of that was on our website, which I showed you in the beginning of this. Um, I don't know if these presentations will be sent out afterwards, but if they are, um, that yellow, really hard to read text is um, what we produced um, each of the sections. Um, the first one, or the first, I can't even read it. <laughs> um, the, the first one was the Parkland coverage, um, Come Back Stronger, how the um, community reacted. The next two are my DC coverage stories the vignettes and the um, longer form story. And then there's the Gainesville March, the podcast, and of course, a photo gallery um, that featured students in the protest. Um, we made that a focus. Um, not gonna give you any tips and tricks because I'm running out of time. So I'm just gonna tell you um, that protest stories are incredibly hard. They're my favorite stories. Um, and in order to get a good protest story, um, you really have to think about what the readership needs to hear from this. Um, as incredibly powerful um, as it was to watch Emma Gonzalez stand on a stage for six minutes and 20 seconds, um, it wasn't really what um, the Gainesville population was focused on or the UF population. They were interested in those UF students that were there and their reaction to that. Um, and that's what we tried to highlight in our coverage. Thank you.